the dogs and I were just driving out here and uh, I've never been down these roads before. Take a look at this. And so I'm just kind of looking at campsites right now. I don't have the trailer with me. It's just the dogs and me in the truck and I brought the tent out. But I'm just kind of scoping out campsites to see if I can make it out here. There's a site with the trailer. You know, mostly because of road conditions. And the road out here is actually not bad. It's, uh, it's got some potholes in it, but I can totally get the trailer through here as long as I go slow. And out here on this main road, it's really washboardy. Here's a decent site. I could back the trailer right up into there. I've never seen these sites before. It's pretty neat. The creek is just right, right over there, right over the edge. See there. If you guys haven't seen Van City Van Life, check out his channel. He, uh, cause he'll get on these roads and he'll just drive and drive. And he drives so much because he's just got a van, right? He doesn't even have four by four, but he's got a lifted van, which is pretty nice. Check out these guys' campsite here. They got a pretty big campsite going on. But one thing I don't do a lot of is just like driving around, you know, for hours on end looking for sites because I'm usually attached to the trailer. And when you have the trailer, you just can't get around as fast or in as sketchy of situations. Like, see, like right here, there's this little hill. And it's fine, I can get the trailer up this, but there's some hills that you'd be like, ah, I'm not gonna bring the trailer up here. So it's good to check it out beforehand. You know, but if you have four by four or you got a decent lift on your vehicle, then you can really get out and explore. That's just what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna camp out here for a couple nights with the dogs and we're just gonna do like old school tent and truck camping. And I got the trailer in a safe place right now for a couple nights and then I'm gonna pick it up in a couple days. And like I said, we'll be back out here with the trailer. So watch for that video. I've already seen deer out here and I have seen bear out here before a few times. If you don't know where we are, we're in uh, Washington, if you can't tell. This is one of my favorite places to come camping and backpacking. Dodger and I, he used to go backpacking with me up here. The dogs and I, we've been full-time nomads now for about three years. And uh, we always have the trailer with us, so we don't do much backpacking anymore. Like, uh, you know, overnight trips where we load up all our gear and right now it's kind of a treat for us because I left the trailer behind for a couple of days and it's just me and the dogs in the truck and I came to one of my favorite spots where Dodger and I used to backpack to and we're gonna hike up there today with just the day pack I got on we got a couple hours of sunlight left you can see the mountains out here I mean this place is awesome I love it out here I just love it it's fairly secluded. Like, there'll hardly be anybody that'll drive by on this road. And then at nighttime, no one drives on this road. And right down there, like where that road kind of, kind of where it kind of ends, where it kind of disappears, that's where I saw a bear one night. I was parked right, right where I'm parked right now. The dogs and I were hanging out in the truck and I looked down this road and I saw this bear coming down. Dodger knows this place really well. We already hiked once today and uh, it was pretty steep. 
And Dodger was doing really, really good. He's old. He's like 16 years old. But he was doing really good going up it. This is the trail right here. It's a, basically a deer trail and a bear trail. Okay, let's go up. Oh, we're going up. Dodger, come on, let's go. Whoa, rock, rock, rock. Shoot. Good job, Echo. You're trying to kill us. Come on, Dodge. Dodger just wiped out. That was really, that was really sad. Echo, hold up, hold up. He, he busted his lip a little bit, just just a little scrape, but he kind of landed and then his face landed in the dirt in the road because he was falling off, of, he was falling backwards. He did the best he could. He did the same thing a person would do like when you're just tumbling like that, like sliding back, instead of like falling, you just kind of go with it and land where you land and that's what he did. And he scraped his face, but check him out now, he's fine. See, he's wagging. He went, he ran right back up the hill afterwards. I mean, I pushed him today because we did that one hike already. And he was getting kind of tired because it was very steep. That was a little you know, I'm pushing him a little bit. He's he's totally fine. But that was a bad wipeout. There was nothing I could do. I'm just huffing and puffing right now because I just had to go up and down that hill too to go uh, check on him. He's totally fine. Like he's, look at him. Dodger, how you feeling? You fine? Let's look at your face. Dodger, stay, stay, stay. Stay. Let me see your face. Let me see your face. You got a little, right there on your lower lip, a little scrape. But he's fine. You know, I got a lot to learn too because he's getting older. Like I said, he's... He's old now, he's 16. He shouldn't even really be hiking for most dogs, but he can do it. So, but I'm kind of still learning because, you know, some of this stuff is steep. We've been out in the desert most of the time and it's flat out there, he does totally fine. You know, he really does good out here in this terrain. Like he understands this terrain, but he's a little, He's just basically not as strong. And so I try to stay behind him so I can kind of catch him or give him a little push if he needs it. Um, and he doesn't wear his backpack anymore. He used to carry about four to six pounds on his back for us. We're going up this hill here and basically right up at the top where those trees are, that's the campsite. And I mean, it's just awesome up here. It's beautiful. We're gonna hike up a, sort of like an old logging road and it makes part of this hike a little bit easier. Dodger, let's hike, let's hike. Come on, let's go. Let's go, let's hike. You wanna hike? Let's go, let's go. Come on, Echo, we're going up. See, here's some fresh prints right there. That looks like elk or deer there's definitely bear up here so i'm trying to talk just in case there's one around it'll hear me now this is the old logging trail you can see it's already growing back like there's i mean there's trees literally growing in the road now but this sort of clears the way for us to get up to the top here. 
see it goes up there. Check this out. One of the places we stopped, I saw deer already, and Echo did really good actually, but, so I got this technique here where I put Echo's leash onto my belt. So with his leash here now, tied into my belt like that, this is a 5'11 belt, and uh, you know, it's pretty strong. It's made to like pull a person up, like it's made to support your body weight. So it's strong, he can tug on that. And he's not going anywhere. He can't get away from me. And then that leaves both of my hands free. I still feel really bad about that wipeout that Dodger had, because it was really bad. He didn't get hurt, like he's he's so strong. He kind of limped his leg for a second, but he's fine now. Man, I, it just makes me feel so bad. Now, I do everything I can. I just wasn't behind him in that moment, because in my head I thought, he's fine, he can do it. But then he started sliding. He was sliding backwards on all fours. I don't know if that was on video or not, but he was doing the best he could. Every dark thing I see makes me think of a bear. Up here, it's so pretty up here. Check this out though. See, doesn't that sort of look like a bear right there? <laughs> There's also lions out here, mountain lions. And the elk out here are very big. And I'm seeing a lot of elk prints right now. Oh, I think we should go up here where it's clear rather than through here. Let's go this way. Dodger, he basically just tries to find his best path. And like I said, he's been up here many times before with me. So he feels really pretty comfortable up here. So we just kind of continue on this old road here. You can see these big trees, how they've been cut a long time ago. But as far as I know, this area doesn't get cut anymore. I'm always worried because this is such an important area to me that I could come here one day and these trees could all be cut down. And I wouldn't like that. Look at the view. See that big mountain right there? That's Mount Rainier. Down here in this valley is so lush with trees. It's just we're so lucky here compared to where we usually, usually are, like Arizona and uh, Nevada down there, at least in the lowlands, or in the areas where it's not mountainous, 
it's just flat desert. And this is just epic. Is, is that not epic? It's epic. Let's go, Echo. The Dodger's doing his own thing. You'll see why I like this spot so much. First off, you have this epic view, but in here, just past this little tree line here, it's cleared. I thought that was a bear over there. It's just a stump. And we've camped here many times before in the snow. Dodger and I have camped here. It's cool to see these trees all growing. It's really neat. I love this spot. <laughs> we usually camp right by these two lumps right here. I'm going to put the tent right here because there's kind of a clear area right there. This has all been dug up by tractors. There's sort of like a, a road in here that you can kind of see that how it goes back. And it's all dug up there. It's super lumpy and bumpy. And then there's trees, down trees all the way across it. So some big equipment has come through here and cleared this whole area out. For whatever reason, I don't know. I mean, it does have an awesome view of the mountain. There's a the mountain again. This is like really a special place to me. And I think everybody has their own special places. The thing about a place like this, and my friend kind of taught me this about how as you travel around, you create homes for yourself. And that's becoming more and more literal as we live this nomad lifestyle where we're moving from place to place. A place like this, this feels like home to me. Where we're gonna camp tonight, which is even further up this mountain, up on the top. That place feels like home to me. When we go to Quartzsite, like that's where we're planning to go this year, it feels like home to me. When we go to our little places in Utah, in Idaho, in Oregon, in Colorado, we got places in Nevada. There's some cool spots in Pahrump or down by uh, Death Valley. Whenever I go back to those areas or even the same campsites, it feels like home and I feel really comfortable there. Just, I mean, super comfortable. As comfortable as you could think you could feel. That's how I feel when I'm there. Dodger knows this place so well. He just walks around here like it's his home too. And I just think that's so cool that he's, he's in his element, just like me. Like I'm in my element, he's in his element. He, he could wander around here all day long and he has a blast. Then he wants to go in the tent at night. It's, it's just super comfortable. This lifestyle. Man, if you're thinking about doing a nomadic lifestyle, you might as well just pull the trigger and just do it for a couple months and see how you like it. Because you're going to create memories. If you have pets, you're going to create memories for your pets and with your pets that they're never going to forget and that you're never going to forget. Even if you decide nomad life isn't for you. I think Echo sees something out there. I think he just got scared by it. And I'm not encouraging people to be nomads or to live on the road. I'm not encouraging people to you know, adopt a permanent lifestyle. I'm not recommending it. But I am, I am saying, like, try something. Try camping. Just go to a state park. There's awesome state parks. Just try something where you're sort of stepping out of your element a little bit. Just try it. And even if you don't enjoy it, you'll look back on those times 
and you'll remember the ways that you grew from it, the things you learned about yourself and about that lifestyle or that environment. And you'll probably find something that you really like about it too, and that will make you wanna go do something in the outdoors again. Basically, that, that is what I'm recommending, is try to do something in the outdoors as much as possible. You got something in your paw? It's funny, in Arizona, the dogs get uh, thorns. Here, <laughs> they get sap. See, he's just got sap on his, his paw. And it irritates them. And they chew it and try to get it off. Man, it's better than thorns. Okay, you guys ready to go? You ready to go back to the truck? We should, we should get you some water first, huh? Got a little technique here. You can see the sun, it's up there. It's kind of in the corner of the frame right now. But if you wanna know what time it is, what you do is you hold your fist out and then from your eyes, you measure how many fists up it is. And in this case, it's, what is it? So in this case, it's about one and a half from the horizon. So we're kind of going from the top of that mountain over there up to the sun. And it's about one and a half of the height of my fist in this position. So that's about one and a half hours till the sun goes behind that mountain. And uh, I don't know, that seems to work pretty good for me wherever I am. You know, as the sun's coming down, you can tell how many hours you have left. So by the time we get in the truck and get on our way, that'll be about a half hour from now. And then uh, we'll probably be up into our campsite in about maybe another half hour. So then we'll have about 30 minutes of daylight to set up our tent. So that's just kind of how I figure time out here. Time out here means something really different than when you're back in the city. You know, you're like checking your watch or checking your phone for the time. Because you're like, it's like down to the minute. Oh, what time does this show start? Or what time am I meeting this person? Or when is the bus coming? It's like down to the minute, you know? You gotta know exactly what time it is. Out here, it comes down to basically daylight and darkness, you know? <laughs> How much daylight do I have left to do whatever task I'm working on right now? Whether it's like getting water or getting food, you know? I don't like to drive in the dark. So I like to know when the sun's going to come down so I'm not stuck out in the dark driving and then when I'm out hiking like this I need to get back to camp you know hopefully before it's too dark just because that makes life a lot easier it's time you know it's the it's the little differences that you notice when you're out here in nature
look at this. I think this is a grouse. Yeah. See it? Right there. That's really cool. For some reason, those grouse, they're not very afraid of people. Like, I've had them jump right in front of me on a trail before and then do their little dance where they like spin around and show their feathers and make like weird warbling noises like right in front of me like i had to avoid stepping on it you tired buddy